question in physical oceanography and especially 21st century physical oceanography is what drives the deep circulation? What forces are responsible for moving water, really most of the water, in the world ocean? And as I alluded to earlier, of course, changes in temperature and salinity are one property because certainly as water becomes more dense and sinks, that's going to create vertical motions. But it's always been a mystery or perhaps maybe not recognized as importantly how that water gets back up to the surface because at some point we have to have remixing of those deeper waters otherwise the whole ocean just becomes homogeneous and becomes one big sink of water. So ocean circulation by definition is up and down as well as around and so what are the forces that drive the deep circulation is a really important question in modern day physical oceanography and one that's not without some controversy. So here we go. There's one group of people that think that it's simply the buoyancy changes that cause the circulation of the deep ocean. I call this the push me camp. In other words, as water sinks, it pushes water ahead of it, and so to speak, and this drives the motions of the deep ocean. There's another camp that says that you really have to have that water pulled up. So through things like wind-driven upwelling, remember upwelling is pulling water up, or even by mixing of water across oceanic ridges that due to tides and other kinds of things, pulling that water towards the surface, this sort of pull you camp is the uh, pull you camp is the other group of people that uh, are sort of the other arguments that are made that it actually takes mechanical forces that bring that water back up to the top. It could be wind mixing, turbulence, upwelling, all those different things. Likely it's a combination of the sinking due to buoyancy changes and the pulling up due to upwelling and other kinds of forces that are both contributing to deep ocean circulation. Where some of this comes from has to do with uh, some ideas that were presented um, both in maybe a hundred years or so ago, but one of these relates to something called Sandstrom's Theorem. And this is something I definitely don't think that you need to um, understand, but if we just let the water sink, Sandstrom's Theorem says it would just become a pool of cold, salty water. That at some point you have to mix up the ocean to keep that circulation going. And you can check out that figure in the book about that. Um, so there is some good arguments that upwelling and mixing are a part of the deep circulation as well. And this is why we call it the world ocean circulation. And this is why we emphasize the fact that both the wind-driven surface circulation and the deep circulation are part of the same circulation. We can't think about one without the other. Of course, in the surface circulation, winds and Coriolis effect are important factors. In the deep circulation, temperature and salinity changes are important factors, but all those but winds are important for deep circulation as well, and temperature and salinity are also important for surface circulation. Some oceanographers prefer a kind of three-part system. So there's a surface circulation and a very deep circulation, and then there's exchanges across intermediate depths that regulate the exchange of water from deep to surface waters. And it's that intermediate, that, that intermediate boundary is kind of where all the action is. It's where water is pulled up or water is sent down, uh, kind of like a conveyor belt system with three parts or three levels to it. Um, and who knows? It's certainly, as we learn more about the ocean, as we make more measurements of the world ocean circulation, some of these questions will begin to be answered, and we can move from the theoretical, which is really dominating this discussion right now, to the observational, which is really where we need to be with understanding the circulation of the deep ocean, and ultimately Earth's climate. Here's a kind of picture of all the different kinds of things that might influence the deep circulation. And again, it's one of those figures I don't expect you to know the details. It's just entirely meant to give you some idea of the complexity of the problem and to give you insights into the different areas that oceanographers are looking at. Um, things like runoff of water and surface waves and cooling and winds uh, and turbulent types of motions. 
um, all sorts of different things that may contribute to mixing of the deep waters or may change the temperature and salinity of deep waters are going to be important forces that influence the deep circulation.